Hey guys, welcome back to Kadawa Shoujo. But before we get into it though, I'd like to remind you guys to give the video a good old like. And be sure to uh, be safe from wherever you're be safe wherever you're watching and to enjoy but before we get into it I'd like to go over what happened last time so we went with Hanako to the airport to pick up Lily and and it was nice to see her again and the boy he saw put the moves on Lily hopefully she reciprocates the boy's feelings but that said let's get into it thank for the quick interception from lily i take a quick gander around the station aside from the train platform all but deserted the morning dew sitting on the empty benches i guess no one else m was masochistic enough to tra brave the very early morning <laughs> someone was, they no more than noticed the huge bags both Lily and Hanako brought with them. Just what just what did you have to pack though in, in, in those things anyway? The bags? Hmm. She pauses a moment and tilts her head in thought. A change of clothes, raincoat, underwear, sleepwear, a number of books. I think that's most of it. You make it sound as if I'm unprepared. You bought less? Underwear and a pack of cards. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the boy only bought underwear. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I mean, it'd be one thing if it was just, if if it was just Lily because he saw could literally just be in his boxers and that'd be it. And my pills, but never mind that. No pajamas. Damn, I knew I forgot something. <laughs> As I ruffle my hair in frustration, Lily sighs. There should be clothes you could use there. Akira still occasionally goes there after all, and I think some of our parents' clothing is still in storage. I don't think there'll be any problem with you borrowing a set of pajamas if need be. Thanks. Still, I don't mind just sleeping in my normal clothing for two days. Good point. Not really, though. Not really, though. Two days should be borderline would be borderline. It's more than looking in the middle of like a slob bin except upon the presence of two girls. <laughs> Not really though. Uh, two days will be border. Alright, I just read that. Doi. As we leisurely walk on the station platform and an announcement sounds the loudspeakers are loudly hearing our ride's arrival. Looking past Lily and Hanako though, the train is still well out of sight. Quick check of my watch is enough to see that that's the one we'll be taking. The 5.30 train was ours, right? Correct. Either of you want me to take your bags? Mine's not exactly heavy. My, my, that's very gentlemanly of you, he said. Don't accept too reluctantly, no. As I bend down to pick up Lily's large bag, I look up to see Hanako picking up hers. You, you fine with that? A silent nod is the only answer. I'm starting to get the feeling that by the trip's end, I'll be able to count every sentence she said on one hand. <laughs> With a morning landscape passing through the window, the occasional rattle of the, uh, uh, of the train bumping the carriage around, I try to focus my attention on the ag aging playing cards held in my hand. I'll raise you five. Um, I... She scrunches her face and leans over, leans over Lily conspiratorially, the two exchanging a few whispered words. Considering how often this happens, so I'm coming to doubt Hanako's grasp of how to play poker. It doesn't seem to disturb Lily reading, though. Her hands are flitting over their, each page with, with only occasional corrections about the, the trains of bumping and, and, and rocking. My collection of chess pieces that we've been using chips and feather to growing anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. Looking around us, our carriage is almost empty as the station platform we've waited the train itself on. Only a handful of people can be seen, looking mostly like tourists and couples on holiday. 
While the two continue their less than clandestine strategy, the small boy looks over his seat and stares at me, hoping he doesn't begin to stare at Hanako. I simply give him a wave and a smile. Thankfully, he retreats back to his seat after finding me far too boring to waste his attention on. I'll raise you another five. Damn, you got me. I fold. I've been bluffing. She's caught me. I push over a large portion of my winnings. Hanako looks absolutely delighted. Even if Lily's attention is focused on Rina Mitchell, she can see a smirk on her face. They're both extremely pleased. Cheating! You're cheating! It doesn't count! For a moment, I try to work out what Lily's reading, but the cover is too faded to read beyond the fact that Roman letters are on it. I pity I can't read Braille above the printed title. What are you reading, Lily? The title looks like it's in English. That's right. It's And Then There Were None, an old British story. I could read it to you if you like. He extends an offer with a grin, obviously, in jest. I think I'll pass. Thanks. After an en endless trip, we finally reach the promised land of the Sato Summer House. Even, uh, even after the trip, the walk up seemed to take forever. Despite my grumblings, though, I'd, I'm, I'd have never guessed the sight that would be in store for us we traveled the long, deserted road. It looks more like a farmhouse than an everyday house, I'd imagined. A small, size, small in size and surrounded by trees and bushes. An empty expanse of wheat fields and farming land can be seen as we walk up the fencing, only consisting of a rickety old wooden planks. The... the it really drives home how far we are from the major cities and the site that feels antithetical to the gut environment I grew up in. I can almost say that. The only thing that doesn't surprise me is the western styling. Wow, it's amazing out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. That's nice to hear. While Akira may have said that she kept the house in reasonable condition, I was worried that we might have different standards of reasonable. It looks like there isn't another soul for miles. I thought Akira would be the type to keep to the city. Lily furrows her brow in thought, seemingly recalling this regard knowledge. Hmm, from memory, there's a small town not too far ahead. Other than that, though, there's a largely just old farmland. Akira and I stayed that our parents' house with was in the nearest city for a while, but after they left, we decided to move into a smaller, more easily maintainable house. To find a place in this Japan, a place like this in Japan nowadays is kind of... Kind of what? Anachronit... Anachronistic. Well... Well, this town does have quite a bit of history. I looked down on the street one last time before getting back on the task at hand. Shall we go in then? I'm parched. It was a long walk to get here. Lily gives an enthusiastic nod. The three of us are lugging our bags into the house. As soon as we set foot inside, Hanako and I start looking around, taking in every detail of where I was staying for the for the for the next few days after the artifacts of another person's life stopped amid motion around the house such as the television guide lying beside the counter it was on and pans in the adorning adjoining kitchen still is sitting on the stove it's a strange feeling really as if we're stepping into akira's life for a brief moment before leaving in a couple of days as we'd come of course, there are more mundane reality that she hasn't cleaned up herself all that well. Where should we put our bags? I'll show Hanako our bedroom. You can put yours here if you if, put yours here if you'd like. You mean I don't have the same bedroom as you two? <sighs> you he saw you dog. Hanako flowers in a full blush as Lily takes her cheek in hand. Oh my, how bold you two. Hold on, if I'm to leave my bags here, where will I be sleeping? Well, this, seeing as we lack a guest bedroom, the convertible futon, huh? Sorry, Hiso. Sorry, Hiso. I sighed, lamenting my place on the bottom of the rung sleeping location priorities. I guess there's no other choice. 
Lily leaves the house so how to go to the bedroom. So I take a small tour of my surroundings after I drop my bag on the floor. The kitchen, just like the living room, is fairly modest. The rustic nature of the wooden furnishing drives home just how far of the we are from civilization. Returning to the living room, I decide to try and the, the television until they get back. Try it with a touch of the remote, it immediately flickers to life. Apparently, it's a news channel. Returning to the living room, I try to decide to try out the television until they get back. With a touch of the remote, I immediately it flickers to life and apparently set to a news channel. Almost flopping down from exhaustion rather than sitting, I lay back and watch, and watch, and watch. Out. I quickly blink to wake myself up. Lily and Hanako having returned or minus their bags from the the Hokiado night sky visible from outside the windows. Looks like I've drifted off to sleep looking at the wall mounted clock head it's already ten. We found the television then. Yeah, it really does feel nice and homey here. I'm glad you like it. You were already out like a light when we came back after unpacking our things, so we didn't have the heart to wake you sooner. Judging from the giggle, I must sound funny when I sleep. I slowly decide not to inquire. There's some dinner waiting for you in the kitchen. Hanako gives a deep yawn, only just remembering to cover her mouth at last second. My, my, are you tired? Rubbing my eyes. Shit. There we go. <laughs> I forgot I have to. It's been a while since I last recorded this, and I kind of forgot that. I have desk space now. Can you believe that shit? <laughs> Is he still sleeping? I think so. I'm not. I am, however, incredibly tired. It's getting late in the morning. I know that. He likely stayed up to watch television. I could hear it in the other our bedroom only because I couldn't get sleep. Should we wake him? Don't do that, Hanako, please. No, we should leave him. I doubt he'd want to be waking us so early if we didn't get much sleep during the night. Thank you, Lily. Besides, he sounds so peaceful it'd be a shame to wake him when he's like this. Keep a straight face, he's telling. It's nice she cares so much, though. Um, Hanako, could you go to the fridge and fish out what's needed to make lunch? Alright, just a little vegetables and rice. Hmm, mm -hmm that would be good enough. We only need something simple, as we can eat in, in town later. Hanako's footsteps on the carpeted floor can be heard and moving away from the living room as they do. I feel Lily's hand gently rest on my chest. It takes a titanic effort not to get a boner. I mean, not to re- <laughs> Why did I say- you know, Joke. I, have to, I had to fit a joke somewhere, so I, it, it's good that I did it here of all fucking places. It takes a titanic effort not to react, but something about her makes me think she knows I'm awake. A long silence passes. 
The only thought in my mind is that the gentle outstretched hand laying upon my chest. After an in, in, indiscernible amount of time, Lily withdraws her hand. Good morning, he said. Conceding defeat all too easily, I prop myself up and run my eyes. How'd you know? Your breathing was off. Well, while that makes that she that makes sense, she couldn't have needed that long to work it out. Knowing her hearing, she likely knew before and laying her hand on me. If you want to sleep more, you should really go to bed early. I heard the television going long on into the night. Sorry about that. My medications have been interfering with my sleep for a while now. Even if I'm tired, I have trouble actually sleeping. I'm sorry for bringing it up, he said. I sigh th this is exactly the kind of thing I wish others wouldn't do. Come on, you worry about me more often than I do at times. It just means I have to sleep it longer, that's all. But still, I'd, I well, I'd say it's absolutely fine, but I guess that wouldn't have a lot of meaning for you. She gives up the sigh of uh, concentration before trailing off with an amused chuckle giving up the point. If you say so, please do take care of yourself, he saw. Go on, Hanako could use some help. As I move up to the protest, who reluctantly acquiesces and disappears into the kitchen, her hand running along the smooth white walls as she, as she slowly walks. It... It still boggles my mind that this game came from 4chan of all places. For a while, I, I sit and watch television in the uh, attempt to make myself wake myself a little more, but it, it's futile. I didn't have anything better to do, so I follow Lily's lead. As I round the corner, I see Hanako and Lily eyes backs turn, quietly cutting food on the granite colored counter. What, there are no cutting boards? I'm temporarily engrossed as I watch Stooley guiding the knife down carefully with the finger on the cabbage she's cutting. Each slice delivered slowly but with precision. She seems a little slow, but considering what she can't see what she's doing, it's small wonder she can cook at all, let alone both her and Hanako. Hi, Lily Hanako. Hi, Hanako, Lily. Want any help? He's... Is that he's... Uh, <laughs> oh, morning... <laughs> He saw. Lily jerks back in the pipe before turning on her yelp, immediately drawing Hanako to me to her side. What? What? What's? Ah. A small trickle of scarlet falls down on the filth, pale fingertip, the knife having cut just deep enough to draw blood. And fucking blood just goes everywhere. She cut a, 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 a an artery or some shit. <laughs> With the television sound masking my footsteps, she must not have noticed me coming. To compensate for having to use a touch to guide everything she's during cooking, she must need to pay extra attention. Lily! Don't worry, Hanako, it's just a small wound. Not realizing that blood has literally covered her entire hand. <laughs> you should still get a bandaid on it at least until at least until it stops bleeding. First aid stuff would be in the bathroom, right? I think so. Will you be okay, Hanako? I frown a little how little heat she's pinged herself as Hanako gives a quick, almost automatic nod. It's fine, I can keep making lunch. An awkward silence reigns as I see the bottle antiseptic, the box of band-aids on the side of the sink. Lily's finger held out for me to treat. The lid of the bottle comes off with the minimum resistance, and a small ball of cotton soaker liquid stains a pale green. Okay, hold it still, this will probably hurt a bit. She gives a small nod as I take her head off and steady it with the tenderness I can muster. I I gently bring the damped and wad into the smaller line. Ah what? I barely I barely touched it. Sorry. I <laughs> Don't be a bitch <laughs> I, I, I give a slight both I give a sight them both at her a reaction to the cell of my own nerves. Her pain tolerance is startlingly low. I would tell you to man up, but I can't really do it. <laughs> she gives a small giggle. I take advantage of her momentary distraction and gently press the cotton against her finger a few times. Thankfully, it's enough to do the job. 
We both settle somewhat as I bring the band-aid over her the tip of her finger. Covering the wound while making sure not to get it stuck to her finger now. There, finished. You can move now. Taking her hand from mine, she gently clasps it in the other. Thank you. It's no problem. It's the least I can do after causing you to hurt yourself after all. She lowers her hand in slight apology as in mind only rubbing her hand in what seems to be embarrassment. Do it, he's told. Make that move. <laughs> That's actually pretty. I, I really don't mind. He an the, her answer doesn't really seem to make much sense. Given what I what happened is pretty clearly my fault. I can't help grimacing at her despite the fact that her her dainty smile still holds. She must not like being reminded of the limitations her lack of sight imposes on her. It's something I can't possibly fault her for. I've fallen prey to the same kind of feelings before, despite my condition of not being nearly ubiquitous in my life. Neither of us any any the happier we head back to the various smells of cooking food coming from the kitchen. I laid down the plates of food, stream slowly right steam slowly rising from the well cooked rice and curry dishes while while Hanako lays out the cutlery. Knife on one side, fork on the other. Western, not perfectly fitting for someone like Lily. Yeah, we don't Yeah, I don't do fucking any of that when I eat. Like, for that matter, like, there are instances where me and my family eat together, but I wouldn't, like, but we never, like, set the table or nothing. We just, when the food's ready, we just go to the cupboard, grab a plate, the drawer, like a fork or a spoon, whatever we need, and then we sit down. Occasionally, if my mom wants to, she... She brings us our food at the table, but other than that, we don't really set places. As we take our seats, taking careful heed of the dark red tablecloth dangling below our knees, Lily emerges from the kitchen. Her hands and her, in her hands are three glasses and a bottle of wine. Oh yeah, oh she's gonna be a wine mom. I can tell. As I recall our previous run-in with that devilish elixir, I hide my face in my palm. Alcohol? Seriously? She pauses as she reaches the table, a playful grin purse on her face. Akira specifically gave her mission to take a bottle from her collection. Hey, hey, time to turn up. <laughs> turn up. Not only does she give alcohol to minors, she lets them pilfer of their own. The perfect model of respectable adult Akira is not. First of all, it's not pilfering if it if, if the adult in question gives you permission to to uh it's not stealing if you were given express permission to 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 help yourself to some. There we go. I thought I would fix the angle cuz it's all fucking fucky. More to the point though is that this is hardly a meal deserving of alcohol. I'm starting to think Lily the type to easily become hooked on things. Oh yeah, definite wine mom. It's not really a problem. I don't really have any qualms with it, but I don't but don't think you have bad experiences with but did but did it blah, blah, blah. but didn't you think you had a bad experience with it last time? Last time was likely due to drinking too much, and so a single glass shouldn't prove a problem. Think of it as a learning experience. I can't recall many of my learning experiences that made me feel rotten before putting the, me to sleep, but I'll take your word for it. She dips an uninjured finger in, inside to feel the liquid level tip against the bottom as she mm, liquid rises up. The, wh the white of her finger almost seems to glow as the sunlight hits it, and the delicate outline blurred reflected by the glass. Her fingers are definitely longer than mine. The kind that think that are most suited for the paintist than a teacher. She likely have done well if she learned how to play. Yeah, and I'm sure they could modify a piano for like a blind pianist. Pianist or some shit. We quickly, quickly. 
English 100. We quickly dig into our meal, forks and knives clattering against plates. None of us are, are particularly eager to speak while eating. Lily altogether is too reserved for such a thing. Uh, Hanako probably is too shy to start conversation, and I too busy savoring the food. Such a pedestrian activity eating together at a table. It seems utterly normal, yet it makes me realize how long it's been since I've done something like this. Just the three of us sitting around the single table eating as if we were a malformed family. Maybe this trip is far and away from any everything we we are was worth it. It takes a quite a long time, but eventually we all finish our surprisingly filling meal. The wine thankfully has little effect even though we only had a glass or two each. Well, yeah, it's wine. Well, I mean, I'm sure that there are some wines with with higher pH levels, but it's not really meant to get you fucked up. It's more like it's more like something to have to take the edge off. Then again, I can't exactly say for sure because I'm a filthy beer drinker, so oh uh, yeah. I slumped back into the seat, rubbing my stomach contently. I'm stuffed. Lily pats her mouth with a napkin twice only twice with evenly timed intervals in in between it's hard to tell someone whether how she acts as well as trained routine or well rehearsed act i think it must be well did you like it hanako mm, it was nice now that we're all fed shall we be off off where ah you two weren't privy to the discussion between hanak ah you weren't privy with me between Hanuk blah, 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 blah. You weren't privy to the discussion between Hanako and me earlier. I get the impression that she's having a subtle dig at my sleeping in. We're, go we're going to the town nearby. I guess I should, have ex I should have expected two girls to take holiday as an excuse to go shopping, no matter where on the planet they may be. I am interested to see more around the north, though, so this can only be this can only be a good thing. Sounds good. How long is the walk, then? It's supposed to be around a mile. Um, it's a bit mile to a mile and a half. <laughs> Nearby, huh? Great. Just great. As we climb up to the path surrounded by trees and undergrowth, I watch Lily and Hanako walking ahead. The slight breeze all but whisks away the sound of Lily's cane tapping on the ground. I notice that Lily since removed the band-aid now, that the bleeding of her finger has stopped. A deep, long feeling breath of the fresh country air makes me wish all the harder that the air around of home had been quite so clean. It can't have been a mile and a mile, but I'm already working up a sweat. Isn't it isn't a pleasantly cool day though, so I shouldn't be too hard on myself for it. Hey Lily, how well do you know this town anyway? Since I spent quite a few of my vacations here, I grew up I, until I rented a Yamaku. I'd say I know it fairly well. We used to drive a, there once a week, and then how I wish Akira were were to drive us now. I quickly take a moment to rub my hands a couple of times, staving off the oddly cold feeling in them. Did you like it up here? I'd say it was a nice during winter, but as you can work out, summers get a little too hot for comfort. It's nice and quiet at least. My family's, my family's real house is quite far north. When we, they left Japan, my parents gave it to me and Akira and me. Only Akira lives there now, after my, my moving to Yamaku. Well, it's quite clearly describes this place, though lonely is how I put it. Other than the prophesized small town, there isn't another soul for miles around. Coming from a home nestled deep within the big city, it's certainly different. I think that if I not come to Yamaku, staying out of the country like this would be too much of a change to get used to. After getting accustomed to the school's isolation, 
though the idea of living in a place such as this has become almost inviting to be somewhere away from the hustle and bustle of the metropolitan centers. So he saw, have you been to Hokiato before? Nah, I used to live in the down south. We never really had any field trips or holidays up this far. Well, it's a new experience for you then. Well, with that being said, that's all the time that I have for now. But before I end things off though, I'd like to remind you guys to give this video a like and to share it. And be sure to follow my socials. That way, y you can be keep up to updates about the channel. And, and subscribe and get that bell on. Also, uh, join the Discord. It's completely free. We go there to... You could go there to hang out and just J-chill with, with the members there. That said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.